The first part of Chem 101 Lecture 5 is going to cover the Schrodinger model and the theory behind how it was developed. So the Bohr model is extremely convenient and it works in numerous situations, but it's a little bit harder to extend beyond hydrogen. So as mentioned, when our experiments don't fit the theory, then we need to revise the theory. And the revision of the Bohr model is known as the Schrodinger model. This is a pretty complex mathematical description of electron orbitals, and those scientists who do calculations with the Schrodinger model have to know about coordinate systems, trigonometry, matrices, and calculus to derive this. I did take quantum mechanics when I went to college. I have to say it was not one of my favorite courses. One of the reasons is that this is extremely heavy math. And it involves the transformation from classical physics to quantum physics by assuming that the electron travels in a wave-like pattern. So you can see that there are derivations, calculus, Greek letters, and I. Did you ever wonder when you would need the square root of a negative number? Well, here it is. Good for you, we're not going to worry about deriving the Schrodinger equation or performing calculations with it. I just need to describe the quantum numbers to you. So if you'll give me your patience, I guarantee you that I will eventually get to electron configuration, starting with the Schrodinger model. And hopefully some of you in this class realize that the electron configuration of nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. That is where I'm heading. So here's the general theory behind the Schrodinger model. The electron was thought to be a particle, and we have experimental evidence that when electrons impact something, they have a mass-like effect and changes occur. But the electron is also an extremely small particle. So in 1924, de Broglie proposed that the electron travels in a stable three-dimensional wave pattern. So if you think about what a stable wave looks like in a circle, if the mountains and valleys line up as the electron moves around this particular orbital, this would be considered a stable pattern. However, if the pattern of travel results in different locations for the valleys and mountains each time, this is a not stable wave pattern. So the electron is thought to travel in stable wave-like patterns. Now, just so you don't think this is some sort of strange scientific theory, this is the way things move in nature. Please allow me to show you the vibrations on a drum. Here we see a still shot of the vibrations of a drum. Here is if you have one drumstick and you hit it in the middle. And depending on how hard you hit it, you may have different types of amplitudes and patterns. Here is a still of two drumsticks and four drumsticks and even more drumsticks. So let's look at what a stable wave-like pattern looks like on a drum. You notice that the peaks and the valleys are located in the same location each time. Now a drum is a three-dimensional representation. It's a little bit easier to think of this idea in terms of a vibrating string. So I'm going to have you, after this video, watch a video of Dr. Nyhart and myself using a jump rope to demonstrate to you a vibrating string. This is here in the notes to help you understand what you're going to be looking for in the video. And so you have a place where this idea is captured. For the first jump rope level, there are no nodes in the middle of the jump rope. And for the second level, the node is in the middle.
and you'll see that. It's not a magic jump rope. The node automatically appears in the middle, and a node is a place with no amplitude. For the third energy level, there are two nodes. And for the fourth energy level, there will be three nodes. So given energy levels one, two, three, and four, the number of nodes is equal to that number minus one. So that brings us to a homework question you'll encounter. You will have a version of this question which says, a four centimeter string is fastened at both ends and plucked. What is the wavelength of the n equal three standing wave and how many nodes does it contain? You actually need to answer the second question first. The number of nodes will be the level three minus one, so two nodes. Our next job is to sort of picture this. The string is four centimeters and I have two areas of no amplitude in the middle where my nodes are. So what would the wavelength be? The wavelength I have described to you as the distance from peak to peak, but that's sort of in the middle. So how about if we go with at zero, starting upward, back to zero, starting upward. Well, I think at this point you can see what fraction of the rope contains the wavelength. Two-thirds of the rope has the wavelength, so two-thirds times our four centimeters is 2.67 centimeters. That is our wavelength. If you want a more general formula, the wavelength is equal to two times the length of the string divided by the energy level that you're given, which in this case was three. All right. Please proceed to the jump rope demo.